Do you want a camera crew? Sure. Thank you very much. You should introduce it. <laughs> Hello, this is Shelly Crosby working with the Bee Whisperer today to check the yards. Thank you, Shelly. I'm Peter Cowan, Bee Whisperer, and we are going to check this yard today. What we actually have in this yard is colonies of quite a variety of different stages that have made it through the winter fine. Um, when I was here, oh, about a week and a half ago, the colonies were at varying stages uh, and some were able to have an extra super added, like this one. So this colony, I reversed the two brood chambers and added another brood chamber onto it because they were already doing well, but I wanted this one fully occupied. That's why I reversed it. And then I added this one here. Um, others like that little brown one there. I left the insulation on because it was only a very small colony just getting through. And I had two or three like that and two or three uh, more that were substantial colonies and we added room on and they're expanding nicely. But we've got a few colonies now, though I'm gonna see if I can do something to help those smaller colonies. It was too cold to do something with them last week. So this week we're gonna do some boosting of those small colonies, provided that they're in a good state. What I'm gonna do is make sure that the queen is uh, a good queen. It's not, not what the fact that it's had a bad queen that it's small. It may be some of the factors. So let's have a look at a colony that may want boosting. Peter, yeah. before we get too far, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. So when I first started working with you, I used to get nervous about frames that actually had mold and such on them. Yep. And um, I know that you had told me that the bees will clean that all up. That's right. In fact, we'll probably make use of some of these frames shortly. Frames like this is basically some people say, oh, the bees died because they got moldy. Actually, what happened is they got moldy because the bees died. Or, in fact, they uh, got moldy because they were maybe sometimes on the outside edge and the cluster wasn't big enough to move air around adequately. And they get moldy that way. Yes. Believe it or not, the bees will clean that right up. And if you put that in a, the middle of a brood chamber, uh, they'd have it polished up and the queen would be laying in it probably within a day, two days. So don't worry about combs like that. They're in perfectly good condition to use. So we're just sorting through one or two of the dead outs. We've got lots of honey, but what I'm looking for right now is frames that have lots of room for the queen to lay in, and that'll be one of them. So let's have a look here. So this is one of the small colonies that we uh, left the insulation on last week. It was still a bit too small to do what I wanted to do anything with. So I'll have a look and see how they are doing now. And we have a very small cluster and a lot of honey still in the hive. So the, before we try to rescue a little cluster like this, we have to ask ourselves two things. Or well, ask us, is it because the uh, queen was poor that the cluster is small and the hive is just dying as a result? Or is it because they lost some bees or something like that? So the only way we can tell is to have a look at what little brood chamber they have in there and make a, make a judgment call. Now, Rather than going straight in there, I'll take frames out from this side first so I don't uh, roll the queen. This time of year, the frames are really stuck together and there's a lot of uh, risk of rolling a queen if you try and pull a frame out that's full of bees. So it's best to go into frames that are not occupied and pull one of those out first. As you can see over here, we are just stuffed with honey. So we have lots and lots of honey over here that the cluster was just never big enough to make much use of it. Let's see what have we got here. Still lots of honey, a little bit of mold. And the only thing you need to do to clean that off, just brush off 
what comes off easily. The bees will repair anything like that, no problem. So there's a bit of space here. Working our way towards the cluster. Again, loads of honey, heavy with honey. So in fact, even if <laughs> they don't have much room to expand in there because they haven't eaten that much honey. I mean, this colony went into the winter with about 60, 70 pounds of honey. They've probably only eaten 20 pounds of it, maybe 30. Another frame really full of honey. So if I can, what I'll do is I'll take those three out and replace them with frames that have room for the queen to do something with, because they're just not gonna eat that much honey that quickly. Now we'll go into the cluster proper. Again, still lots of honey on here. I can see lots of pollen stored here, so right on the edge of the little brood chamber. I can do this relatively quickly because I don't want to chill them because it's not that warm out and there's not that many bees there. They're, they're struggling to keep it warm as it is. And here we go, look at this. We've got a beautiful mm -hmm. little brood chamber here and right in the middle of it, we have a queen. Queen's still pretty small, um, but I would say that's because there's relatively few bees to keep her bulked up. And she's got eggs right out to this area here. And the whole the only bees can only cover this amount of area, but every bit that they can cover, they've got full of brood. So to me, that tells me that this is probably not the queen's fault. They've got a nice packed little brood, about a softball size brood cluster there. Let's see what the next frame is like. Again, nice compact little brood patch there with young brood just around the edges of it pollen around that more brood there so what we have is a beautiful little softball size cluster of brood and to me that's all the signs that this queen is okay the queen was fine it's just they lost a lot of bees in the fall or went into the winter with a relatively small cluster and haven't got enough bees here to raise a lot of brood yet so we're going to fix that by giving them some more um, some more uh, space and some more bees. So first of all, we're going to push the cluster all back together, and I'm going to take the opportunity to center it a bit. So we've got brood on three frames here. This one's got brood on two. And again, we're on the outside edge of the root chamber here. And what we're going to do is we're going to give them a bit of space. There's a little space on this frame here. And we're going to give them another couple of combs of space here. And uh, so they've got room to expand into. So these three frames of honey we're going to take out. In fact, I'll probably take out here. I've got this frame of honey over here. So we've got a bit of honey on each side. And I'm going to put an empty couple of frames on these two sides. There's still honey amongst the cluster here. But I'm going to take a few frames that have some space in them and I'll just pop them in there. I'll just grab those from over here. So this gives the, the queen room to lay. We're gonna use this moldy one. That's going in there. And this one's got a bit of pollen, some honey, plenty of space. That's going in there. We know there's still lots of honey in here. Whoop. And we're gonna put one more frame here. A little honey in it. that's doing. So this is a colony well worth saving, but it needs some help. This will expand and be a decent sized colony by July, but I want to make use of it in May. So what it needs is more bees right now. And that colony over there is a bigger one. It's got more space to it. So let's have a look at that. 
I'm pretty sure it's got a lot more bees in it too. Maybe that one. This is one I opened up a little earlier and it was had a good deal of bees. This had the brood chamber reversed a few a couple of weeks ago. So I know this colony is doing well. Within a week or two, these are these frames have honey in them. This these this colony is going to need more space very shortly. So we may as well use that egg, give them the extra space by having them move into that colony. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, first of all, get our smoker. We'll drive the bees down a little bit. I'm going to take a couple of sheets of newspaper. This is called the newspaper method. You can use this for combining colonies. You can also use it for boosting colonies. In effect, we're combining two colonies, but we're going to keep both queens going. Because as opposed to combining colonies where you kill one queen and you're just using the resources from one and the queen from the other, plus its resources, in this particular case, we want to save both queens. So the, in order to do that, we put a queen excluder on it. Now, that sheet of newspaper will be a, a way to slow down the movement of these bees into the other hive. I'll poke a couple of holes in it just to speed up the process, but we don't need to speed it up too much. Now what we'll do is we'll take this colony. Take these bits off. Still fairly heavy with honey which these bees might appreciate. Okay. So now, this colony here, this little cluster here, which has only a softball sized brood chamber, is going to benefit from extra bees here and when there's more bees here they'll be able that queen will be able to fill those empty frames with brood and i expect in about 10 days time there'll be a good solid three to four frames of brood in this brood chamber and this colony will not get overcrowded because the extra space here is here uh, absorbing the uh, surplus population that this colony would have had in about two weeks time anyway. Wait, I'll just tidy this up right now, drive the bees down. These remnants are left from when the food was on there. A bit too much to put this cover down. Now if you're collecting wax, this is the first harvest of wax for the year. This will be all good stuff to reutilize. All I need to do, I don't need a fancy ent uh, entrance. A little crack in the front is gonna be a perfectly good uh, entrance for them for now. goes over the top and any field bees that fly out of here we'll try to find a home over here but because that colony is now gone some will drift into the other adjoining colonies but the more important thing is that this brood chamber is now going to benefit by a large influx of bees it'll take about two days before the substantial holes in the newspaper and this population is going to grow very rapidly and uh, that queen will start laying just as quickly as the queen below. Right now, the best that she could do is probably laying 100 eggs a day because there's just not enough space for her to lay anymore. As brood emerges, she can lay eggs. 
Once the population grows slowly, she could lay more. Or as the temperature rises, she could lay more. Whereas this colony, once we get another four or 5,000 bees in here, she'll be laying several thousand eggs per day. So that's boosting a small colony. Let's see if another one needs it. May as well have a look at it over here. So hopefully we can do exactly the same thing with one or two others. Again, very small cluster. See if it's worth saving. Question will be, do I have another hive that I can put it on to in this yard? May have to leave them like this for a bit. Let's see. But ones with the small clusters, it's not that they died off during the winter, it's just they just never went into the winter with a big cluster because they just never ate any honey. They've got lots and lots of honey in these. Because there just wasn't a big population to eat it. And I'll start to get into the cluster itself. Sometimes it, you find that there's just no queen in them and they're dying off. But in this case, we've got pollen, which is a sign that we've got a cluster. I can see a little bit of brood in the next frame. If anything, this one's even smaller than the previous one. cluster with brood in it here, cat brood, cat brood here, this is easy and honey, we've got some nice white larvae around it but not terribly well fed because there just isn't a very good population of bees around it. And we can do something about that. So a commercial beekeeper, oh look at that, that's a beautiful little cluster there. Look how nicely packed in that brood, that cat brood is. It's a nice little laying pattern, it's just so short of bees to be able to keep them fed. So we can help her with that, look at that. Beautiful little tiny cluster that we can help her with. So with a few more bees, this colony would be doing fine. Now we've got some empty space here. We've got empty space on this comb too. Mm -hmm. Just making sure we don't have to take out some of the honey here. Another empty frame here. These things should have come out last summer. A little pollen here, no more brood on this side. Another empty comb and another empty comb here. So this is ready to receive some bees, if we could find them, if we can find somewhere to get them from. So we're gonna look for another, another hive. I'm gonna give them a bit of space, um, a bit more frames with comb in it. Um, we've probably got more honey than they need, so we'll take another frame of honey out of this side. And we'll put some more frames in here that uh, will give them space to lay. Taking a few frames out. These frames out, so surely if I can ask you to get a few frames out of one of those ones in the truck, and I'll take the camera while I look in these hives here to see if I can get a strong enough one to boost it with. So I could possibly put it on this one, or that red top one over there, or the one next to it, the white top one. So let's have a quick look. Let's check the ones over there first.
They'll work great. Yep. Okay, this is pretty good. One, two, three, four seams of bees here up from the top. It's not perfect. So let's see if I can fit this one better. this one's a little stronger so um, we're gonna use this one to boost that so nice load of bees there I'll just go and get another queen excluder So this colony will be pretty full in another week or so, so it's not going to hurt them to expand now. Weather's not too bad. It's best if you do this on a hive that's bursting with bees, but I don't happen to have that in this yard, so we're just going to use what we've got. Okay, so we've got a queen excluder which will stop the two queens meeting up. We've got a cluster of big high full of bees here and two deep, two deep soup is worth. Over here got our little cluster. We've got a few more frames here that we can uh, put into the into the hive. So we've got a fair amount of honey on this side of the cluster. I'm going to put a little bit of honey on this side of the cluster. Move it to the middle. So there's some of the bird comb off it. drawn comb in here for them to expand into as their population grows. So this cluster will grow beautifully. off it looks more like spring now put this on top making sure they've got some space to get in and out and that's two hives boosted in a couple of weeks this will be a nice decent sized brood chamber probably even ready to split uh, three weeks more likely, mm -hmm. but two weeks maybe. 
depends on the weather we get. So that's how we boost. We're boosting some hives here. We'll get around the rest of this yard, make sure they've got a little bit of sugar syrup. There's a little bit of an active flow on the warm days, but we're not getting any more warm days for a week or so. So we're gonna put a few feeders on these hives and uh, they're getting plenty of pollen and we'll see how they're looking. We should be ready to start splitting colonies in a couple of weeks. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer, and that's Sherry. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>